All right, so maybe you just ordered your M1 Mac or you currently have one and you're looking for an external display. I wanna follow up on a YouTube short that I did when it came to the cables and really the accessories to purchase when it comes to your external display. So let's get into it. What is going on you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to follow up on a YouTube shorts that I did the other day, answering some questions from the community. It was a quick way for me to do that, but I needed to clarify something in my research. Now I had talked about with the M1 Mac mini and I'm also reviewing the M1 MacBook Air. So I will actually uh, have more on that to come, but I did do a comparison between these two when it came to the external display. Now, when it comes to your external display, whether the mini or a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air M1, that is, I had talked about if you are connecting your external monitor um, via the USB-C or Thunderbolt out of the computer, but it is a USB-C capable monitor that you should be able to get 60 Hertz refresh rate if your monitor actually goes up to that, which it probably will. However, for those of you that also have a display port, you can connect that as well coming out of the Thunderbolt 3 connection of the computer and into a display port cable. I will link those all below, all the ones that I'm testing. And so you should also still be able to get a 60 Hertz refresh rate on that as long as again, your monitor is capable of it. Now, one of the things that I needed to clarify is when I did the testing with the HDMI cable, I was actually getting a 30 Hertz refresh rate. However, here is the disclaimer. Now, if you have a monitor that is capable of HDR, so high dynamic range, we'll talk about that briefly in a second, then what you should actually be able to do is go into your monitor settings and enable that. And then when you're coming out HDMI out of the Mac mini, you should then be able to get that 60 Hertz refresh rate. That is something that I wanted to correct and to clarify. Now, I know there's a video out there about supporting up to six external displays and hey, if that's your bag, that's cool. But here's the thing, the way that the specs work for the Mac mini is that it will support up to a 6K uh, resolution display via the Thunderbolt 3 and then also a 4K display via HDMI. And the MacBook Air will support up to a 6K display at 60 Hertz refresh rate, but keep in mind that the display itself on the MacBook Air is at 2560 by 1600. Now, what I'm about to say is going to be saved for an entire video in and of itself, because as I start getting monitors in to test, I can give you more details on that. But for those of you that ha have reached out and are interested as far as what to get, what I will tell you is that you will see monitors that are IPS or in-plane switching, and you will see monitors that also have VA panels. Now, for those of you that are also creators, video, photo, and I know that there are gamers that certainly are interested in HDR displays and that higher dynamic range, but when it comes to in-plane switching, simply put, that's where you actually have better color accuracy as you move around the monitor. And especially if you had like an ultra wide that curved and having that panel, you'll see that the color accuracy throughout the entire monitor should be pretty much the same. However, on a VA panel, you may see as you turn or move around that monitor, and especially an ultra wide like the one I have behind me, you may notice those colors getting washed out. So if I were photography mainly, I would pick a different monitor than the one I have. However, as a video editor primarily, this monitor being a good all around, good photo, video, and gaming monitor, that's why I actually picked it. So again, that is for a completely different video, but one of the things that I did wanna just highlight is again, the HDR aspects or that higher dynamic range, and then of course the refresh rates. And of course, to reiterate, when it comes to the cables, especially the HDMI, I want you to think about looking for cables that are 4K or as far as the data transfer is concerned, up to 18 gigabits per second. But again, I will link those below, the ones that I'm testing. Now, I've often talked about the USB-C capability of the monitor, and so I highly recommend it if it's within your budget and something that fits your specs, because th with that one cable, being able to connect it to the monitor and then using the monitor itself as an external hub has been fantastic. And with that USB-C capability, I'm getting the native resolution of 3440 by 1440 at 60 Hertz refresh rate, whether HDR in the monitor is toggled on or off. 
Now, in my testing, I was also finding that with the HDMI, it would default to a 30 hertz refresh rate still at the native resolution. However, when I enabled HDR within the monitor, and this is the thing that I wanted to correct, I was actually getting a 60 hertz refresh rate at the native resolution. However, it was allowing me to also scale up to 3840 by 2160, which I, I wouldn't recommend, especially if it's not that native resolution. It's just gonna look kind of wonky. But I just wanted to clarify that with you. Now, going into the comparison between the MacBook Air and the Mini, utilizing the hub that I've recommended, going via HDMI through that hub, I was getting 2560 by 1080 at a 60 hertz refresh rate on the Mini, but I was also getting the same thing as uh, 2560 by 1080 with the same 60 hertz refresh rate with the MacBook Air. However, it was giving me the option to scale up again to 3840 by 2160. Now with the native resolution of the, the MacBook Air being 2560 by 1600 and then having that secondary display, again, it, it'll look a little funky. So personally, I wouldn't recommend it if that's not the native resolution of the monitor. However, if you can find a monitor with a display port, now here's the thing. I had talked about in that previous video, the USB-C to display port from the mini, still the same 3440 by 1440 at 60 Hertz refresh rate, again, with that option to scale up. And it's the same thing with the USB-C to display port from the MacBook Air, pushing that monitor again with that same resolution and that same option to scale up. Now, one of the things that I really needed to address with you, and this is something that is really hard to show you uh, in the video itself because of how the, the screen recorder is and taking the, the screenshots. If you have an HDR capable monitor, if you're going into the display itself and toggling that on or enabling HDR in that, one of the things that I do want you to be mindful of is that you may get a pop-up box in the Mac OS, the display preferences. And you may have that option to toggle on HDR as well. Well, what I was actually finding with my monitor, and I'm just sharing this with you just in case you run into that snag, is when I did it with the Mac mini, so HDR toggled on inside the display itself, having that control, but then toggling it on inside the, the OS, like in the preferences, it was actually washing out the image. So it's really hard to show you, but what I will tell you is that it just did and it didn't look right. However, flip side on the MacBook Air, I did the same thing. So the display HDR enabled, going into the display preferences of the computer and then toggling that on, and it literally looked like my image came right out of the 80s because everything was just neon. And I did wanna quickly address the television aspect as well, and that's a whole nother ball of wax. I tested it on my 4K uh, LG 55 inch that does have 120 Hertz refresh rate and V-Sync and all of the bells and whistles, but as far as the MacBook Air being able to push a higher refresh rate in that, it was able to push 4K no problem, but only at 30 Hertz through that hub and HDMI. I'm still experimenting with that, but it was able to at least push the native display or the native resolution that is. So I just wanted to give you a heads up that TVs just work a little bit differently here. I've certainly used one uh, with computers, but again, if you're a video editor, photo, you need color accuracy, a monitor is definitely the way to go. Of course, as always, I say you probably will have some questions. There's gonna be more videos coming out, more details um, as far as monitors are concerned and editing and everything in between. So you go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces. I'm gonna keep creating that value for you here. I appreciate your time and attention on this one. You go do the things and I'll catch you right back here on the next one. Mm -hmm.